Hello again, art students. It's me, Miss Friels, your art teacher, with another exciting week of learning about our natural world and creating beautiful art. Last week, we had so much fun exploring the Monterey Bay, and we're so lucky to live on the Monterey Bay with all the cool creatures that live out there in the water. This week, we're going to take a journey into the redwood forest. Did you know that we have beautiful redwood forests all around us, all the way from Santa Cruz, all the way up through Northern California? We have these really majestic and special forests. And in these redwood forests, we have beautiful trees, and not just trees, but we have really cool animals. We have salamanders, frogs, toads, all kinds of insects. And this week, I'm going to teach you a little bit about the redwood forest. Why is it so special? And about some of the cool creatures that live in the redwood forest. Two of my favorite creatures I will be teaching you about today. And also, I will teach you how to draw those creatures. All right, I'm super ready to get started and we have a lot to learn this week. So I'm ready to take a journey into the Redwood Forest. Welcome to week 12, Life Science, Journey into the Redwood Forest. And I found my slide whistle. How cool is this? Listen. Isn't that fun? All right, art students, I'm ready to learn and I'm ready to make some art. So let's go. Let's start by looking up, up, up at this ginormous red redwood tree. That's the height of a skyscraper. The trees at Redwood National and State Parks can stretch over 300 feet high and live for more than 2000 years. In fact, they're the tallest living things on earth. The tallest tree, which is nicknamed Hyperion, is three times the height of the Statue of Liberty. These trees grow so large in part because they have extremely thick bark that helps protect their cores from forest fires. The bark also naturally repels wood-eating termites and other destructive insects. Redwood trees share their space with various types of animals, including tree squirrels, northern spotted owls, the banana slug, elk, deer, gray foxes, raccoons, possums, and all kinds of other species. Over the last few centuries, the redwood forest ecosystem has shrunk considerably, and many trees have disappeared as a result, but people are working to ensure that redwoods make a comeback. One of my favorite animals that lives in the redwood forest is the gray fox. A gray fox is a medium-sized fox with short legs, a mix of white, black, gray, and red fur, and retractable claws that can be pulled in and pushed out. The gray fox is the only member of the dog family that can climb trees, either to search for prey, sleep, or to escape from predators. Their claws are strong and hook, they look like hooks, and that's why they can climb trees. When a gray fox has babies, she usually gives birth to about four or five cubs. They love to eat rabbits and rodents the best. All right, I got my whiteboard marker. I got my whiteboard eraser for when I make mistakes. Remember, I like to start on a whiteboard because I can erase easily. And after I practice on my whiteboard, I can do it again on a piece of paper when I have some more time to practice and when I feel confident. All right, look at how cute this little gray fox is. First, let's just notice some simple shapes, okay, before we get started. Look at the shape of the head. The shape of the head is kind of like a football, isn't it? It's kind of like a football, kind of like an oval that's a little bit pointed on the sides. The eyes are circles. The ears are big triangles. The little fuzzy chest is like an upside down triangle. And the rest of the fox is pretty easy peasy lines. And remember, we'll go step by step together. So don't worry. If this looks too difficult right now, if you just follow along, 
take your time and go step by step, it won't be too difficult. Also, notice something about this drawing. We talked before about symmetry. If I draw a line right down the middle of this fox, the left side of the fox is pretty much exactly the same as the right side of the fox, except for, of course, the tail. So kind of everything we do on the right side, we're going to be doing the same thing on the left side. So what I like to do is just to first start with the shape of the head. Once we get the shape of the head, the rest of the fox will come much easier. Now, when I draw the shape of the head on my whiteboard, I need to remember to make room for the large ears on top. Gray foxes have huge ears. Why? Because they need to be able to hear so look at it starts off with an arc we an arch remember we always kind of talk about the way that lines work this is like uh, the shape of sort of like a hill so I'm gonna start right about here just watch me first an arch kind of like that and actually I don't really like how it started so even Miss Friel sometimes has to start over let's try that arch again about like this. I'm leaving room on the top and I'm leaving room on the side for that big beautiful tail. I'm going to copy that line but instead of going up and down I'm going to go down and up to sort of make the shape of the football. So just watch me. It's going to go down and back up kind of like when we were doing our shark right? except for the fox. The shape of the fox head is definitely a little bit thicker than the body of the great white shark. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the shape of the ears, which are two large triangles on the top. So I'm going to start by doing the left ear, a large triangle, leave a little bit of space in between, and the right ear, a large triangle. And then look, inside the ear is where all that fuzzy fur is. So I'm going to do two additional triangles, just smaller on the inside. And we'll talk about texture later, okay? We'll talk about how we can make it look like they're fuzzy inside. Okay, what I like to do right now is I like to make a line right down the middle. I'm going to erase this line later. We've done this before with drawings. This helps me understand where the line of symmetry is in the fox's face. Okay, it helps me understand the line of symmetry. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a line from this point over here. So there's two points here where the top line and the bottom line intersect. I'm going to take my marker and make a line that curves down from this corner, this point, down to the middle, right here to the end of this line. I'm gonna make one line. So just watch me first, okay? Oops, let's turn my marker around so it works better. Just about like that. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Remember, it's like symmetry. Whatever we do on this side, we're going to copy on the other side. So from this point all the way down to the middle, I'm going to make another curved line. It's okay if it's not perfect, right? Nature, nothing in nature is absolutely perfect. Now I'm going to do this little triangle nose. The little triangle nose is just a little bit up, right? It's a little bit up from this point here. It's kind of like right in this space. It's kind of like right in this space like that. So I'm going to do a little triangle nose. Now, luckily I'm using my whiteboard marker, right? So I'm going to erase the little lines that are underneath the nose there because that line was just to help me understand where the middle was. I can do his little tiny mouth. Just like the mouth on our sea otter, it's just a line down and two lines up like this. Now, because I have these lines here, I can understand where the eyes go better. The eyes sit a little bit above this cheek. The reason why we made this line is because gray foxes have all kinds of colors. They have white, they have gray, they have black, they have orange. And I'm going to make my line, my excuse me, my eye a little bit about halfway between the end and the middle. So it's about right here and they're just circles. Remember if you're using a whiteboard, don't worry, you can erase it if it's not right. So same kind of thing, I'm going to try to make the eyes even, okay? I'm going to try to make these eyes just about 
in the same spot. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So the eye was about halfway between the middle line and the end of the cheek. Okay, remember if you need to rewind and watch this again as many times as you need. We're just gonna get the basic shape of the flux right now, okay? All right, look at this beautiful um, fuzzy chest. And it, it's kind of like an upside down triangle, isn't it? And you can see I added these lines zig, 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 to make it look fuzzy. But right now, let's just, let's just concentrate on getting that shape. And notice how it starts about in the middle of the cheek, down, back up to the middle of the other cheek about. So I'm gonna make a large triangle down and back up for the chest. Okay, you guys are doing great. Now it's obviously sitting, but I'm gonna do these, these legs first. So it's she's, she or he has got two legs in front and the other legs are behind. The other legs are behind, the hind legs. So let's start by um, drawing some lines <clears throat> to make these two front legs. Watch this. One line down, two lines down, two lines down, right in the middle. Move over a little bit to make them a little bit thicker. Copy the same thing on the other side, symmetrical, remember, for the, for the two front legs. Now these legs look a little bit skinny, so I'm going to make them a little bit fatter in a minute. But right now I'm just going to add the little feet, just little loopy shapes like this. And just like the sea otter, when we made the claws, the feet, we just added some simple lines to show claws. Now I think I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to make these lines a little bit fatter. Those are really skinny legs, aren't they? And while I'm doing that, I might as well add some fur. I might as well add some texture. So instead of doing a straight line, I'm going to practice a ziggy, 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 zaggy line like this because the foxes have beautiful fur. Okay, I like that a lot better. All right, look at this shape of this line. It starts almost at the neck, a little bit down, and it goes down and gets tucked in behind the front feet. So I'm just practicing that line before I drop. I'm kind of practicing the shape and when I feel ready I'm going to try my best or we'll crush looks good try the same on the other side remember you might need to uh, erase it you might need to try and erase it a few times to get the kind of the right shape you want that looks so great and don't forget his beautiful tail the tail look at this it's like a triangle with a big round bottom so I like to kind of go like this, a line over, and then I'm going to pull that line down and back under. He's kind of sitting on his tail, right? So I'm going to kind of pull that line down. It's like a triangle, but I'm going to keep going down and back under his body. Okay. Now the way that I'm going to show texture is later I'll show you with crayons, but for now I want it to look fuzzy. I want it to look furry. Do you see how he's all around him instead of straight lines is ziggy, 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 ziggy lines. I'm just going to practice that with my whiteboard marker and I'm not going to worry about it being perfect because I'm going to practice it on paper later. But just watch how I show how to make fur. So instead, and I'm just going to go right over my, my lines. Instead of a straight line like I have, I'm just going to practice zig, 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 like that all around my fox. This is great practice before you do it on paper. Zig, 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 fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. Think fuzzy, think fuzzy. I'm going to do this around the head. Fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. These foxes are so cute and fuzzy. They have beautiful, beautiful coats just like this. I'm going to keep going. And remember, I'm just practicing. It's my whiteboard. So I can just have fun and practice the texture on my whiteboard before I do it on my paper. Yay. And of course this beautiful, beautiful, big, big tail. And the tip of the tail on a gray fox is black. On a red fox, it's white. All right, let's add a couple more details. The nostrils and the eyes. I'm just going to practice. They're a Right? I'm not going to leave them totally white. I'm going to leave a little bit of white space in the middle or a shine on the eye and maybe a little bit of fuzz on the inside of the ears like this just for practice. 
And just like that, I am ready to draw this again on a piece of paper and show you how to create texture with a crayon. Okay, for the fox, I am just going to be using crayon today. But when you do the outline of the fox, you can um, also use a Sharpie. If you, are, if you have practiced using a Sharpie before, you can outline your fox in Sharpie. And what I mean by outline is by taking a black crayon or a Sharpie and going on the outer lines. Outline means on the outside line, using a dark marker or a dark crayon to, uh, to show these lines better. So on this one, I used the Sharpie, but on this fox, I'm just going to use a black crayon. Okay, so I'm going to outline my black, uh, excuse me, I'm going to outline my fox in my black crayon and then show you texture with other colors. I have a silver color crayon. Um, I have my black crayon, obviously. I don't need two blacks. And I have an orange and sort of a reddish orange color to uh, show texture on my fox. So. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to create the illusion of texture with crayon because foxes are really, really fuzzy. They're really hairy. So on a gray fox, I'm going to put this one next to me because I learned how to color a gray fox correctly by looking at a photograph and then kind of copy the correct colors. So notice there's black, there's gray, there's white, and then there's a beautiful orange color. And for this fox, I think I might even add a little bit of a darker orange, a little bit of a darker orange. So when we um, need, when we're adding texture, the best way to explain it is just like we added the zig, 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 zig lines around the, the fox to make it look fuzzy. For the hair, I'm gonna do short, you can hear the sound of my crayon. I'm gonna do short lines like this to give the illusion of fur. And I'm starting with my black because the fox has um, some black kind of up through its face and a little bit around its eyes. So short strokes, short strokes of your crayon, whatever color you're using, I'm going to be doing the same thing here. And I'm going to start with my black and then I'm going to be adding some more colors, okay? So start with your black along with me. And then if you need to press pause at the end of the video to sort of look at the colors a little bit better, you can go ahead and do that. All right, let's have some fun. Oh, I forgot his whiskers. <laughs> 